So that is the Franciscan uh, Prayer and Retreat Center here in Stoneville, North Carolina, about 30 miles uh, north of Greensboro, North Carolina. It is a retreat center where I'm staying uh, for a retreat with the Fund for Theological Education. That is relevant because I am here on retreat uh, for the 2010-11 uh, Ministry Fellowship Year. I'm a fellow of the Fund for Theological Education, and part of what we're doing is some discernment of call and uh, of project. Um, and one of the tools that is being used is something that the folks at FTE are calling a discernment circle, and they are uh, uh, admittedly naming that is a kind of an adaption uh, or adaptation of a Quaker process that they call a clearness committee. And I have, uh, in the past few years, run into several organizations that are doing um, a modified version of uh, the practice in the religious society of friends uh, around corporate discernment. And it's interesting to me how these things get appropriated and used. And I don't mean appropriated in a negative way. They're just appropriated. And so I thought I would talk a little bit about um, my understandings of, of corporate discernment and um, my own tradition of the Religious Society of Friends. And, and as usual, this is just my interpretation. I'm not speaking as some kind of uh, complete authority on the subject. It's just my understanding and, and my practice and the way that sometimes um, I teach and, and um, talk about the, the idea of corporate discernment. So um, there'll be links to some um, files that I use and some documents that I use when I lead retreats myself or have workshops. So those will be available down below. Um, so if you want to just skip ahead to read some of those things, go for it. Um, so the deal with corporate discernment, at least as far as friends are concerned or were concerned, is that um, it is possible to discern the will of God. Um, I tend to feel that's um, best analogized for me kind of with the idea of this divine lure, that God is, is a force pulling us to something in the world. And it's kind of like, you know, how water goes to find the, the source that is the easiest for it. It finds the lowest point and it flows towards it. Well, uh, hypothetically, you know, the arc of the universe is long, but it tends towards justice. God is calling us into something in this world, too. And sometimes the water gets caught up in a dam or... Uh, you know, a hill, and it has to work for a while until it can move down to that low place. Sometimes in our lives, we get caught up against obstacles that are temporarily or sometimes for a long time uh, impediments to us living faithfully the way that God is pulling us to be in the world. And so discernment, then, is the idea that together, um, in a corporate body, we can help each other see what it is that um, that low place is, the place where we're supposed to be go, where we might be lured or called into being uh, by God. Um, tangentially, um, being called into God, into that place, means living into gospel order. And gospel order, as I understand it, is um, both the goal to get into gospel order and the process so getting to gospel order is gospel order. Um, you know, George Fox, who was one of the, pointed to as one of the founders of Quakerism, said this thing over and over again. Um, as I understand it, Christ is coming and Christ has come. And that logic doesn't work so well in terms of thinking. You know, if I, if I say hello to you, it's not that I said hello to you and am saying hello to you. It's like it happened. Well, God doesn't always play by our rules, and part of what happens when you're doing corporate discernment is you're inviting God time into the space. There's this, there's this powerful holy listening that happens, which gets named here. Uh, for the FTE, they use that phrase, holy listening. Um, and what's happening in corporate discernment is a group of people are gathering, and the belief, at least um, one of the beliefs that can be the case, and it seems core to me, is that what you can do is listen for how God is calling someone in the world. What are they being called into? And, and, for, and for what purpose? Um, so people gather together, generally in a very, to a greatest degree as possible, um, present, listening, active space, where a person can speak um, their concern, what it is they need clarity on, what they need to move forward, and then the people listening query them. They ask questions. They never give advice. And they, and they allow themselves to become, to the greatest degree possible, a vessel for the questioning that God needs for this person. Now, there's a danger there. Traditionally, friends have understood themselves to be um, uh, in, inheritors of the gift of prophecy and that it is poured on flesh 
for, for all people. Um, and the danger there, of course, as Bruce Epperly and some other folks have pointed out, uh, and it sometimes happens in evangelical circles too, that if I say, oh, no, 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 it wasn't me, it's God, I both remove myself from responsibility. Oh, no, no, God did it. And I also don't, um, you know, give myself the credit for saying yes to, to being the, on the path uh, of of attempted faithfulness. So there's some problems there, but traditionally the idea is I empty myself of me and allow God's voice to speak forth. And that what God's voice is speaking forth is a question. It's the question for the person who's trying to reach some clarity. And as we question, um, the person need not respond. It's not a question that they have to answer. Sometimes those queries are just things that they sit with and I might ask them the color of their shoes, and it turns out that they end up thinking about sneakers and then feet, and somehow foot washing comes up and is kind of on their heart. So we don't know why what we're asking is being asked, you know, hypothetically or theologically. We're supposed to ask the things that we seem to be led to ask to the person who's being focused on. And um, the idea is that God works in that space, that the Holy Spirit is present, And when we enter into a space, you know, when two or more are gathered in my name, um, God can work. And so this practice of corporate discernment, which is sometimes called clearness committees or discernment circles, is really an attempt to be nitty gritty, practical about our belief that the Holy Spirit guides us and that we are lured and called into some gospel order. And uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about some of those things. I'd encourage you to read some of those documents below. Parker Palmer has done a lot um, outside of the Quaker tradition to kind of reach within the Religious Society of Friends to give this practice to other folks. Um, I'd encourage people to make comments, to ask questions. I might make a longer video later if people want to hear more about corporate discernment and clearness committees. Uh, Again, read the articles. Um, Hopefully some of this was enlightening or useful theologically. And let me know if this is a technique or skill or something that y'all would like to see more about online.